Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds. So this is where I like to collect together all the different things that I purchased over the past week and present it to you. I get it from different places like my local record store, but also online retail like Amazon, eBay, and more. Just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for and who has it. Um, I've always got new stuff coming out, but I've also got cool things that I've dug through and found at these places. And I'm going to run through all of that with you. I've got eight titles to run through here, and we'll do it in just a minute. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also, leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this with new music finds. So let's jump into the new releases that came out. And there weren't a whole lot for this past week. I've got some carryovers from the previous weeks because, again, it just has to do with when these things arrive for me. But we're going to start off with the one that actually just came out this past uh, Friday, February 9th, and it is Revolution Saints and their fifth studio album, which is called Against the Winds. And if you're not familiar with this band, it's got Dean Castronovo on drums and lead vocals. Dean Castronovo being a member of Journey, but also Bad English, um, Hardline, basically anything with Neil Sean in it, uh, he's been part of. And not Santana, I realize that. But you know what I mean. Uh, these guys have had a connection for a long time. And anyway, um, Frontiers Records had always wanted Dean Castronova to take over lead vocals. He's got an amazing, beautiful vocals. They created this band for him. Unfortunately, they don't write the music. That goes to in-house writer Alessandro Del Vecchio, who I know a lot of you guys are tired of. I agree. I think he has his hand in too many cookie jars, so to speak. But I have to say, the one thing that that guy is good at is writing stuff that sounds like Journey. It's good, melodic, AOR rock music. And that's what this band is. So while some of the other projects that are put together by Frontiers Records that Alessandro Dovecchio gets his hand in, I don't really care for. And I don't like how he changes the sound of certain bands when he comes into them, like Hardline and um, Totally Drawing a Blank, but Joe Lynn Turner's project, uh, Sun something or another. You guys know it. Um, this one here is what it is. It's it's what he, you know, is known for. And so that's fine with me. He can write the songs for this. I wish a lot of these projects, though, that Frontiers Records put together, they would let those guys write the material. But, you know, in the end of the day, I know what it really comes down to, which is dollars. They can hire someone to sing and play something for a lot less than paying a band to write and then giving them royalties for it. And that's really what it comes down to. They're using name recognition to pull us fans in and they're doing it on the cheap by paying someone else to write this stuff and just churn it out. Uh, because albums don't sell the way they do, so they kind of get the big bang out of the gate and after that they move on to something else. Anyway, that being said, I do think this is a good album for what it is. Um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, when I get in the mood and I want more Journey, I usually reach for my Revolution Saints. Fifth studio album, so you got some good stuff. We've also got Jeff Pilson on bass playing and Joel Hookstra on guitar from Night Ranger and White Snake, who does an amazing job with the lead guitar works. That's one thing you can't really write. If you bring in a guitar player, you're going to hear their style of the lead work, and that's the case here. All right, uh, this one here came out the previous week, but um, I didn't place the order for it until afterwards, and it came in post me filming last week's episode. So I think that was uh, February 2nd, and I'm talking about the band Freeways. It's a Canadian band, but they actually sound like a new wave of British heavy metal band. And this album, I believe, was recorded in 2020, even though it's getting a reissue or maybe first time on CD here in 2024. When I read about it up front, it said it was a new release. But then I went and I downloaded it to, you know, on streaming services and found that it said 2020. And what kind of the best I can understand is the album was recorded in 2020. Don't know whether it got a CD release at that time, but it's definitely getting one now, and it's definitely getting a much wider release, if nothing else. So the album, the music itself, is actually four years old, but it is not 1980s old, even though it sounds like New Wave of British Heavy Metal. And I love that era of uh, heavy rock, you know, heavy metal, however you want to think about it. 
These guys do it great. I'm loving this album. I think it's only got, uh, let's see, eight, seven songs on it. But the album itself is really good and worth checking out. So I highly recommend that. And then I think this is the first time these albums have ever been on CD. Denny Lane, guitar player for Wings. Three solo albums from him. Um, I think the first one and maybe even the third one have uh, definite connections with Wings. Paul McCartney playing on it, co-writing songs, stuff like that. So if you are a Beatles fanatic, Paul McCartney or Wings fanatic, probably an album you want to get. Um, I've been dying to get a hold of these, but then when I listened to this, I have to say it was a little bit disappointing. It's very raw. It's not well produced in my opinion, and it's definitely not to the level of what the music of Wings is. Not to say it's not good, but I'm going to have to adjust my hearing. But, you know, a lot of times after you've been waiting, 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 and you're, you're get it, and you're going to listen to it, and of course me, I want it for Wings uh, reasons, sounding like that. And when it doesn't, you know, you got to let shake that off a little bit and come back to it with a fresh mind. And so I'll give this a listen a few more times and certainly at different times. And it'll probably really grow on me. Usually this stuff often does. Um, but right now I have to say I was a little disappointed with it overall. Now, in terms of the release of this, because like I said, I'm pretty sure this is the first um, that these have been pressed on the CD. I mean, it says on the front, all CD debuts, and I don't think I've ever seen these other than bootleg versions before. But you're getting three albums here. You're getting Ah Lane, Holly Days, which is actually him covering a bunch of Buddy Holly songs, and Japanese Tears. And uh, here's the backside of this. Uh, just so you know, when you uh, open it, it is a single piece of paper. There's not a booklet or anything. So you get the front side of the LPs and the back side. And that's the extent of the information. What I also found is while this is a nice, you know, high quality printed on label, it's actually a burned disc. This is not a silver disc. So this is... A, it says made in Switzerland, and I know that I had to wait for this thing, and it was hard to get a hold of. I ordered mine through Amazon, but this is not going to necessarily be a super high quality silver pressed with a lot of cool info about the history of these albums and all of that. I was really hoping for it, but I I knew it probably wouldn't be just because I saw that it was a no name label uh, coming from Switzerland, and. Um, Kind of surprised, you know, why get released in Switzerland and um, as opposed to, a, you know, full on domestic release of this thing, you know, why over there? But anyway, there you go. If you're a fan of Wings, Paul McCartney, you probably want to pick that up too. All right. Then I've got uh, five things here that I picked up from my local record store. Um, talked about it last week with the passing of. Uh, Wayne Kramer, MC5 guitar player, is kind of a big shock, at least to me. Um, and I wasn't expecting that, so I pulled out all my MC5 albums, my Wayne Kramer solo albums, and was enjoying that. I wanted a little bit more, but I know that the band only recorded those three. There's a bunch of live things that are out there. And then I found this one, Thunder Express. And on the back side, One Day Live in the Studio. And so no audience sound to it. The band is live, so it carries the energy of the live performance, but essentially studio performances. And what I really liked about it was that it has songs from the debut album, which is live in concert, having an audience. So essentially you're getting studio versions of those, like the song Kick Out the Jams, which most of us only know as the live version from the album itself, same name. And here we go, we're finally getting studio versions, so to speak, even though it's live in the studio. There's still studio, there's no audience with it. So just an alternate recording of it, cool way to hear it, um, released posthumously after you know the band had broken up and everything, but um, very cool. I was glad to get a hold of this, called up uh, my local record store, Sound Exchange, who just about always has anything I want. And I called up and I said, hey, checking to see if you have this one. They were like, yeah, sure. And I was like, new or used? They were like, used. I was like, is it in good quality? It sure was. And got a hold of it. So very happy about that. Same visit for that one, at least. I picked up this, Badfinger Airways from 1979. 
Uh, we just have two of the members here from uh, Badfinger in the group. We've got Tom Evans on vocals and bass and Joey Moland on guitars and vocals here. And we got a bunch of other cool people on this as well. Nikki Hopkins is on keyboards. Um, and you got uh, other people. Andy Newmark is in here. Ken Her Herrick is in here. The other different members, uh, people from other lineups of the band over the years. But I just like that Nicky Hopkins was playing on this and one of the later era ones. So this was a reunion album for the band. They had done their um, original run and I forget the label it was on. And then they moved to Warner Brothers. Uh, broke up uh, when that didn't work out. Unfortunately, the band, just as I found reading a bunch on them, terrible mismanagement and were ripped off and just all kinds of bad stuff happening to them, um, you know, leading to the band not being more successful than they were and breaking up at, uh, you know, different points and stuff like that. But uh, those two albums that they recorded for Warren Brothers, I ended up uh, picking this up on a later visit to Sound Exchange, went back in and grabbed this. So self-titled release and then Wish You Were Here album. Um, this one also includes, in concert at the BBC from 72 to 73, um, cool performances. This is a Rhino Records release, um, also put out by Ed Sell. So I think whether you're in the UK, Ed said Sell here in the US, it is Rhino, but partnered up. So uh, three albums, two CDs, you get these two on one disc, which is nice. So it doesn't break up the studio performances in the second disc. It's all of the BBC Live. And a really killer booklet that comes in it, but getting that, I, I dig it. Um, so got that. Got a little bit more bad finger in. And you can see I was on a bit of Beatlesque Wings, Paul McCartney stuff following the 50th anniversary Wings reissue of Band on the Run. The underdub mixes from the week before. And I then get my Denny Lane. And I went out picking up some Badfinger stuff, just kind of continuing on with it, which has actually gotten me into this whole 60s era rock thing that I'm currently uh, enjoying at the moment. Uh, pulled out other things, uh, you know, guys, I'd already been listening with uh, Blue Cheer, Iron Butterfly, stuff like that. But I pulled out the Turtles. And you guys know that uh, their big hit, Happy Together. So from that, I always knew that there was the offshoot project, Flo and Eddie, but I never checked any of that out. And I decided to pick up two releases. Well, when I say two releases, it's four albums, but two CD packages. So get the debut and the second album. And so the first one here is uh, their full name, The Fluorescent Leech and Eddie, which was their names when they were out with the Mothers of Invention, um, Frank Zappa, playing with them. And I'm learning all this new. This is all fresh to me. So if you guys know this, which you probably do, forgive me because it's new for me. So even though I've been listening to music for more than 34 plus years, um, it's great to always find something new that I didn't know about. And I got to say, this debut album here is so good from start to finish. It is a killer rock album. Now, the rest of the releases I found out that the band is known kind of as a comedy duo doing satirical stuff. If you're a fan of Frank Zappa, you probably love it. I'm not the biggest fan of Frank Zappa, so I found that I really liked the debut and I also liked the fourth album. But um, this one is, you know, I like enjoyed this, but I have to say it's this release here, which is illegal, immoral, and fattening. I listened to the first track, thought it was fantastic, didn't realize it was a collection of live recordings, and it's got some really off-the-wall stuff that's in here that when I was expecting it to be rock and that stuff came on, it was kind of you know, like, what the heck did I just buy? So I'm going to have to give this stuff a little more listen and maybe kind of see if it grows on me the way that some Frank Zappa has grown on me, but I'm still not a big fan overall of his stuff. Although I do like some of it. I absolutely love his guitar playing. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not a big fan of comedy rock or satirical type stuff or parody rock or any of that, even though I do uh, respect some of the major artists in it like Weird Al Yankovic and so forth. Anyway, I did pick up some Flo and Eddie. These two albums, I know there is one more out there called, I think, Rock Steady. But just starting with that and uh, keeping things going. But I have to say that debut album is really good. And the fourth one itself, like in uh, Moving Targets, 
This one here I actually really like as well. So hey, at least purchasing that, there's one album on each of the discs. And I don't believe they've ever, well, I won't say that they've never been released uh, individually. I think I did see that at least some of them have, but certainly very hard to come by. Um, I actually wanna say it might be this album. I think this one I saw going for $200 on eBay. And I don't know if I even saw either of these albums um, individually that I could pick up, but they are available as these two for releases. And when that's the only way I can get them, I don't have any problem. I'll pick them up. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode, seeing the things that I picked up. But I know only eight items, right? You guys are used to me having 15 plus or so. Um, but some weeks are slower weeks and some weeks I'm happy to dig back into my collection. Uh, if the lesser things come out, no big deal. I'm good with it all. I don't buy specifically for having a certain number or hitting a certain mark, especially not for making videos like this. It's just literally whatever I come across and whatever my heart desires, I pick up and uh, whatever it is, I show you guys. And so this week, we got these eight releases. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.